Today for our daily cancellation, we turn our gaze to a woman called Tess Holiday, a morbidly obese woman who identifies as a model. Holiday has been a plus-size model and body acceptance advocate for many years. She feels very strongly that obesity is a wonderful thing and we should encourage more of it. Basically, Tess Holiday will be dead before the age of 60 and she very much wants you to join her in this act of suicide. And I understand that may seem like a harsh way of putting it, but encouraging morbid obesity is an awful dangerous thing to do. And I think we need to be very exceedingly clear about that. Tess Holiday is easily 200 pounds overweight from the looks of it, maybe more than that. Nobody gets to that point naturally. Nobody is born that way. That isn't a thyroid condition. You have to spend many years eating a lot of food and getting very little exercise in order to achieve that sort of size. And that's why we have in the past and should continue to put a stigma on morbid obesity. Yeah, there should be a stigma. It's not the look that we're stigmatizing. It's sloth and gluttony, which is what leads to morbid obesity. Why do we stigmatize sloth and gluttony? Well, because that those qualities will make you miserable and unhappy and unhealthy and eventually kill you. So yeah, we should stigmatize it. So when we say that Tess Holliday is an obesity advocate, what we really mean is that she advocates the behaviors, the self-destructive suicidal behaviors that lead to obesity. And for that, she should be thoroughly shamed and condemned. She doesn't care about body positivity anyway, much less self-love. She is merely trying to justify and feel better about her own vices by encouraging others to join her in them. Misery loves company. It's a, it's a truth as old as time. Now, these are all true statements about Tess Holiday, but we, we were never supposed to say any of that out loud. And, and now we're even more so supposed to shut up about it, given that Tess Holiday has found a new way to make a victim of herself. The morbidly obese woman announced on Twitter a few days ago that she's in recovery for anorexia. And we have to say that her recovery appears to be going pretty well. Here's what she said, reading from the Daily Wire article. It says, plus-size model and fat activist Tess Holliday revealed last week that she has anorexia and is in recovery. Quote, I'm anorexic and I'm in recovery. I'm not ashamed to say it out loud anymore. I'm the result of a culture that celebrates thinness and equates that to worth. But I get to write my own narrative now. I'm finally able to care for a body that I've punished my entire life and I'm finally free. Uh, and then she continued, not the but you're fat, how are you anorexic comments. Y'all don't know how science and bodies work, do you? My technical diagnosis is anorexia nervosa, and yes, I'm still not ashamed. I'm too damn happy for y'all to even come close to dimming my shine. Responding to criticism concerning Holiday's body acceptance activism, she said, quote, To everyone saying that I can't possibly love myself and have an eating disorder, that is the actual definition of loving myself, being able to prioritize myself and be in recovery. I'm more self-aware than any of my critics, but you know, y'all go off. In an Instagram post, Holiday similarly talked about her weight, and scolded people who tell her that she looks healthy lately. Quote, to everyone that keeps saying you're looking healthy lately or you're losing weight, keep it up. Stop. Don't comment on my weight or perceived health. Keep it to yourself. Thanks. Periods in, in between all those words. Um, okay. Now, yeah, she don't, don't comment on Tess Holliday's weight. None of your business. I mean, Tess Holliday poses half naked in front of cameras every day, talks about her weight, brags about her body, constantly shares all kinds of information and imagery with the public that none of us asked to know or see. I mean, we're trying to go about our lives, and Tess Holliday is always running up with a bullhorn shouting, hey guys, let me tell you more about my body. Anyone want to hear? And yet it's none of our business. We aren't supposed to talk about it. Well, perhaps Tess Holliday needs to choose a lane here. If you're a private person living your everyday life, minding your own business, and somebody comes up to you as you walk down the street and tells you that you're fat, then sure, that person's probably a bully. But if you go up to someone else who's minding their own business and say, hi, I'm fat, isn't that great? They are well within their rights to respond and say, no, ma'am, it's not great. It's not attractive. It's not healthy. And you're going to die soon. You might not like that answer, but you brought it up. Don't want to hear the answer? Then don't bring it up. This is, a, this is the rule. Anything you say to me, anything you bring up to me, I am allowed to have an opinion about. If you don't want to hear my opinion, don't tell me. If you don't want to hear the public's opinion, don't tell the public. But what about this claim that she's anorexic? I mean, how can that be? Good Morning America did a segment on the issue a few days ago where they interviewed Tess Holliday, and uh, here's what she said about it. 
This morning, supermodel Tess Holiday revealing her struggle with anorexia. The mother of two saying she was recently diagnosed by a psychologist, but has ultimately been struggling with disordered eating most of her life. I always thought that I overate. But then people in my life would say, oh yeah, I eat more than Tess. And it was almost like I wore it as a badge of honor. Known for loving and celebrating her curves as a body positive activist, Holiday has been receiving support for her honesty from many, but also being questioned by some online about how she could love her body and also have an eating disorder. I've had a lot of messages from folks that are anorexic that are livid and angry because they feel like I'm lying. I am plus size, but advocating for diversity and larger bodies. And so I think for people hearing me say I'm anorexic was really jarring. Holiday's dietitian Anna Sweeney says, if you think that most eating disorders are visible conditions, you're wrong. Eating disorders don't have to look a certain way. I understand that people look at me and I don't fit what we have seen presented as, you know, the diagnosis for anorexia. But then for me, that tells me that there's a larger problem, which I've been actually saying for years, is that we have a, like, a lack of diversity and representation in the world. Oh my gosh. We need more diversity and representation in eating disorders. That's what she just said. For too long, skinny women have been getting all the anorexic attention. Tess Holiday believes that she's owed some of that attention too. Why should they be getting this, this attention? I'm here. Well, I want attention too. She believes that she's owed attention for being too fat and too skinny at the same time. She also seems to think she's stumbled on a good excuse here. She says that she thought she, thought she was overeating, and frankly, the evidence for that theory is pretty good, I have to say, but then she realized that she's anorexic, so if anything, she's undereating. It's a clever trick, you have to admit. Now, obviously, a 300-plus pound woman would not qualify under any coherent definition of the term as anorexic. The, the very term anorexia comes from the Greek meaning without ab appetite. That's what anorexia means, without appetite. That is evidently not Tess Holliday's problem. But anorexia is a mental illness, and as we've discussed in this segment a few times recently, mental illness is a category experiencing its own um, rapid inflation, shall we say. A great many mental illnesses are simply medical labels for normal human behaviors, and even many of the ones that describe some kind of legitimate condition have been expanded now into near meaninglessness. Anorexia is the perfect example. Listen to the latest definition of anorex anorex anorexia provided by the website nationaleatingdisorders.org. To be diagnosed with anorexia, uh, or rather anorexia nervosa, according to the DSM-5, the following criteria must be met. One, restriction of energy intake relative to requirements leading to a significantly low body weight in the context of age, sex, developmental trajectory, and physical health. Intense fear of gaining weight or becoming fat, even though underweight. So far, so sensible. That's what you imagine when you think of an anorexic person, right? Underweight, little appetite, not eating much, afraid of getting fat, etc. But then there's the third definition added recently. Quote, disturbance in the way in which one's body weight or shape is experienced, undue influence of body weight or shape on self-evaluation, or denial of the seriousness of the current low body weight. Well, there it is. Undue influence of body weight or shape on self-evaluation. In other words, everyone is anorexic. Did you know that? You're anorexic. So am I. We all are. Welcome to the club. Every single person on earth is anorexic because it could be argued that all of us, at least one point or another, have been overly concerned about our body weight or shape. What counts as undue influence? I mean, how much influence is due and who decides that? And who decides when it's undue? Well, nobody does. It's all subjective. It's all arbitrary. It's a one-size-fits-all label. That's the point. We live in a culture where many people are desperate to be victims, desperate to relieve themselves of the burden of agency and self-determination. Unfortunately, the medical industry is more than happy to oblige, which is how Tess Holliday gets to be a morbid, obese, potty, body positivity advocate who brags about her obesity, yet at the same time is not responsible for her obesity because somehow it's a symptom of a disorder which, for everyone else, causes a catastrophic loss of body weight. 
It doesn't make any sense at all. No sense. But it's not supposed to. This is what makes Tess Holliday feel the best about, best about herself and her choices. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. So, for that reason, we have to say that Tess Holiday today is canceled. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.